The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 582 You've Lost Something Starlight wandered the lonely corridors of wherever she was, trusting her instincts to keep her silent and out of trouble. The place seemed labyrinthine for the sake of being labyrinthine, with dead ends everywhere and corridors that doubled back on themselves for no reason. It was like it existed solely to sap someone's confidence, waste their time, or make them spend more time in the strange, unpleasant anti-magic atmosphere. The joke was on them, though. Ever since she had activated her nightmare module, the feeling of being breathed on seemed to slide right off her, like it was caused by a thing, and that thing could no longer see her. She still couldn't use her horn, though. She had lost track of how long it had been since Glimmer disappeared. Just as well. Maybe the hallucination thought she was being comforting or keeping her company, but she would have rather had someone help her, and all the other filly had done was hemmed and hawed and talked about... whatever. She couldn't actually remember, aside from that it hadn't been important. Still, though, there had been a certain quality to her, before using the moon glass, she hadn't seen it, but then there was something bright about the filly, warm and welcoming, a feeling she was certain she hadn't perceived before. No, maybe she had? The only thing like it she could recall was the harmonic flame in Ironridge. Blinking, she recalled the flame there trying to talk to her and imparting her a bit of its magic to help patch up her horn. Maybe her duplicate had something to do with that? But why would she need to be moonglassed to notice the filly felt that way? Starlight shook her head and pressed on, the vague feeling that she had lost something and she didn't know what, fighting with the present realization that being glassed wasn't so bad once the period of switching was done. She could actually live like this. Voices suddenly met her ears, sounding weary, and she instantly perked up. More prisoners, maybe? She could possibly learn something, and also test just how stealthy the spell made her. She stepped closer, aware of how her shadow absorbed every vibration of her hoofsteps and prevented even the sound of her breathing from escaping, unless she willed it. Hey, this job. Don't know whether it's worse when the place has just been emptied out, or when it's full of scum clamoring for their heathen lies. Pah! <laughs> Why? You so much of a sadist you enjoy listening to them already? This place really is getting to you, haha. Ugh, no. Just don't like it here when it's quiet. It's always too quiet. You know those horror stories where that means everything else is hiding from the monster and it's about to jump you and you get killed? Bah, that's soft call. But it's a step in the right direction. Well, this is like one of those, except it's quiet because the monster's already dead. This place feels like a tomb when it's empty. One that already hates us. Isn't that what it is? You come here for two reasons. To die, or to keep others in line where they die. Which mostly means marching them to the teleporter. Only when it's filled up, it's a waiting line for Gashiva's thief instead. Starlight frowned, standing in the middle of the corridor, as two guards wandered out from around the corner. They were both stallions, the aggressive one a nerf pony, and the complaining one a bat pony. She instantly decided she liked the bat pony better, though neither of them were nearly as bright as Glimmer had been earlier. Folding her ears in thought, she tuned out the rest of the conversation as they passed, unaware, on either side of her. They were bright, too? It wasn't a quality she had a better name for, and she knew she had never applied it to ponies before, but brightness was as good a word as any. And it wasn't like the earth pony was negatively bright, just dull. But that metaphor didn't work either, because they weren't actually glowing. It was a feeling she felt, not a sight she saw, and it would have to be dozens or even hundreds of times stronger for her to break her self-control and run to his side and bury her face in his chest. The bat pony, that was. The earth pony, she wanted no more than she would pick up a pretty pebble in a field, though she probably would anyway, if she had truly no reasons not to. Something felt very strange thinking about other ponies like this, and she wasn't sure what it was. 
lives were supposed to be valuable, weren't they? <sighs> Being Moonglass was weird. She wished she understood it better. System about help activated, the voice she associated with turning this way projected into her mind, leaving the words almost floating there like she could hear them just by thinking about them and experience them outside her normal perception of time. About help database missing or corrupted. Limited functionality available. <sighs> Started growled under her breath. She knew her horn was somehow wrong, but why did this thing have to keep telling her she was broken as well? Notice, system functions are limited or unavailable. Yes, she knew. Starlet kept stalking through the low brick corridors, claustrophobic and grand, all at the same time. But this thing clearly was a tool, right? It reacted to her thoughts and intentions. There had to be some way to figure it out or make it useful. System configuration menu accessed. Starlet blinked. She wasn't sure exactly what that meant, but since it seemed occasionally able to accurately read her intuition, maybe it could tell her something useful. What could she do from a menu like this? Could it tell her anything about how she interacted with Moonglass or other bat ponies? Emulation mode launch settings menu accessed. Default setting is post permission system engagement. Post permission? What does that mean? Setting. User permission required to change core system modes as requested by external events is required. Warning. Disabling this setting is a security risk and allows for forced, unwilling changes. Starlight frowned. But wasn't that exactly what Moonglass did? Changed her without permission? Or was touching it supposedly permission? What was it supposed to do? Ask nicely if she wanted to get glassed? Error. Database entry for Obsidian corrupted or not found. Of course it wasn't. Starlight threw back her head and growled, but it didn't matter. She had no idea what she was doing anyway, playing with a voice in her head that treated her body like some kind of machine. It felt like it should feel worse. Shouldn't she be bothered by objectifying herself like that? Oh, this was weird. Nightmare modules were weird. Maybe they were only not so bad if she didn't think about it, because she was starting to see what just kept Valet up at night. Unnerved and suddenly very lonely, Starlight quickened her pace, wanting to see someone bright. She nearly skipped past an entrance to the wall before snapping back, blinking, and staring at a staircase before her. It went down, unfortunately, but that was still more progress than running around in circles, and none of the other cells she ran into seemed occupied. She stepped in, wondering what else this place had in store. End of chapter 582